Hey y'all, you go send this wrestling color podcast right here on YouTube. Go ahead and thumbs up the video, subscribe, follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. If I do anything else on social media, I will link it in that banner and let you know where to follow me. Get into all the content. The latest was the return of the shock jock, specifically in pro wrestling. A tale of two bookings, Sunny Kiss and Jay Vidal. Um, I just noticed some things and I wanted to talk about it. What kind of fan are you? Fan violence. L.A. Knight. Yeah. We got an old head going nuts. And so on and so forth. Get into all I have to offer. I got some shorts down there. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do the damn thing. I'm trying to do the damn thing. What are we talking about? So I, I did a podcast on Is There a Wrestling Boom? It was a Bleacher Report that talked about the four reasons why WWE is the hottest it's ever been since the Attitude Era. So, I want to talk about, and this isn't going to be long, because this is my theory. Is there a wrestling boom? And what is causing that boom? And I guess, I bet you, you wouldn't think that this is the reason. The reason why there's a wrestling boom is specifically because of diversity and inclusion. Now, I just happened to run across this article from Variety. It was written in uh, by Gavin Bridge, February 23rd, 2023. And I'm going to read some of this article to you because it's fascinating. They use AEW. They're talking to Tony Khan, Jay Cargill, Anthony Bowens, Eddie Kingston. And the responses from... Tony Khan is comical at best. I guess because he's the owner, he has to be a fucking, you know, uh, oblivious to the real world. But the other wrestlers kept it all the way live. Okay? And this is why wrestling is booming, quote unquote, because of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Diversity means more different type of people outside of the default white people. Equity, more people can make money outside of the default white people. Inclusion, other people, everybody is comfortable to come over and see what's going on and not be ostracized and thrown by the wayside like we used to do. Remember, all of those dark side of the rings, if there's a black wrestler and they have to talk about his how he got into wrestling, it's always a... A battle. You gotta fight white people. You gotta, you gotta do this. You gotta do that. Like junkyard dog. He could, he literally could not elevate because he was black. That was the whole dark side of the ring. Never. Uh, he, he, although he was on drugs, yes. But the drugs became more apparent because he could not get past the racial element of the audience and the perception of black men. So let's get into this article article real quick. I'm telling you, I think this Invitas line has like thrown my bite off or something. I don't have it in, but it's like my tongue. I'm starting to sound like Cody Rhodes. So this one, they went ahead and did like a breakdown of uh, pro wrestling fandom in the U.S. And so it was a, a survey. U.S. adults, 18 and over white 18 and over black 18 and over so um how would you describe viewing of professional wrestling so when we talk about just overall all u.s adults 54 percent never been a fan 23 percent were lapsed so they was in and out or they just fell off completely 13 percent fan a fan but don't watch all the time catch it when you can six percent of the overall U.S. adults, 18 and older, watch regularly, while 5% watch all the time. When we talk about white people, 18 and older, okay? We're talking about 59% never was a fan of wrestling. Which is funny because that is the historic base, is white males. 21% were a lapsed fan. Um, 10% of white uh, fans 18 and over don't watch 5% of fans watch regularly and 5% watch all the time now here we go black fans 18 and older 30% never been a fan 
36% were LAPS fans. 19% fan but don't watch often. 11% are fans and watch regularly. 3% watch all the time. Why am I telling you that? Because there's something that's bringing those black fans back. I remember watching um, Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock. And a lot of people always said that Stone Cold, Stone Cold act like a black dude. Like his talk, his demeanor, that those type of, the cadence, those type of um, attributes that Stone Cold was, had was, it tri was always like zoomed back to black people. When The Rock leaned into his blackness, I guess, he seemed like a black dude on TV. Although that's not The Rock in real life. The Rock is very um, vanilla. Very Wonder Bread. Um, leans more to his Samoan. Meanwhile, you got the Usos who are like two black dudes. And those are all the way Samoans. They're not mixed by no means. And they all the way Samoan. Even, even Roman Reigns' swagger is like, damn, he act like a black dude. You know what I mean? Y'all even say he said nigga on TV like they, they all deep in the culture. Now when you look at the Usos, they grew up super hood. All of them grew up in, in I think, Tampa or Pensacola, Florida around nothing but black folks. Because when you're poor and you're from other countries and stuff, that's where they put you in the black folks area. So what does that translate into? The diversity translates into fandom. Research provided by Consumer Insights shows that 7 out of 10 black Americans have at some point in their life been a fan of pro wrestling versus under half of the total population. One third of black adults are currently fans versus one fifth of white adults. Okay? Then when we look at pro wrestling viewership by race in the first quarter of 2022, and this is from viewing from January 1st to March 13th, SmackDown had... 25% black viewers compared to 55% white viewers. Hispanics made up 14%. NXT, 24% black viewers. Hispanics, 15%. And whites made up 55%. But when we look at something like AEW Dynamite, 69% are white viewers. 12% are black viewers or no I'm sorry Hispanic viewers and 13% are black viewers when we look at cable prime time average it was 14% 12% and 69% of white folks so if we could deduce this Smackdown WWE NXT WWE Raw are more popular in black and Hispanic households than they are in white households and I didn't account for the other race viewers, for the mixed race viewers, because it's a very small population. The audience composition of professional wrestling also reflects diversity. In quarter one, the majority of major pro wrestling shows airing on cable and broadcast show more diverse audience than the total viewers. I've been to live audiences at WWE a couple times, and those audiences are very diverse. There are a lot more white and I mean black and Latino people in the audience than what you would think if you were watching TV. And that perception of diversity in pro wrestling, pro wrestling, compared with other content on TV, how do pro wrestling shows compare with regard to regularly featuring a diverse cast or group of performers? Forty-four percent of people said pro wrestling shows are more diverse than TV in general. 9% said pro wrestling shows are less diverse than TV in general. And 47% said pro wrestling shows have the same diversity as TV in general. I would beg to differ. I think there's more diversity in the audience on live shows than there is on live TV. But there is diversity. And it's, it's showing a lot more these days. So the question was asked. As a person running a wrestling company, you are a cultural steward. Shaping pop culture both domestically and internationally. Do you see it as a responsibility to help showcase diverse cultures given this? Tony Khan went on to point on to say, Presenting a diverse group of wrestlers all across the world is great. 
But the most important thing is that they are great wrestlers. It's what they have in common. Now we all know that's not true. We all know that's not fucking true. But that's okay. Okay, Tony Khan. Now, what is it about wrestling that makes it appeal to a diverse audience? Jay Cargill said, it's not here to reach one audience. We are here to reach that little black girl, that little Hispanic girl. We're here to reach a lot of people. There are a lot of layers to wrestling in general that can reach different people. Eddie Kingston said, every person in the world can understand struggle. Every person in the world can understand a fight. I'm not a pro wrestler. I'm a pro emotion person. Tony Khan said, anyone all over the world can get into wrestling no matter how much money you have or where you're from. That's how I got into wrestling. I'd go to shows with my dad and you see people from all over and they're sitting together. And I'm pretty sure Tony Khan was not sitting in the regular square with the rest of the wrestling fans. This is where the delusion comes in and where he tries to stifle his privilege. Now, you had those little boys emulating um, Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman in them. Those were black boys. And they went viral. And they were recognized by, you know, uh, Paul Heyman and uh, Roman Reigns. And it was cool. And the reason why is because they show they saw something cool, the people playing it cool, and they were diverse. Roman Reigns is Samoan, and Paul Heyman is a white Jewish guy. So you got diversity right there, right? What does it mean for someone to watch wrestling and say, that person looks like me, or that person understands my struggle? Eddie Kingston said it means everything. It's why we're here. We're here not to just entertain, but to inspire. I want to make sure that a kid who lives in East 237th Street sees someone like me who came from around the corner of that area and can see what I've done and what I've gone through and the dumb things I've done when I was a child but forged ahead. Anthony Bowens, it means a lot. I always say I'm privileged because I've been through a lot, but it's also a morsel of what other people go through. They live in an area where it isn't as safe to be out as an LGBT athlete or person in general. I had the support of my friends and family, but the whole process was draining. When you're living a life, well, a double life, you're living a life of anxiety. You're living a life of fear. And I had so many moments where I felt helpless. To be able to be somebody on television every week, it doesn't matter if you're gay, bullied, or feel like all hope is lost. I'm hopefully an inspiration to those people. For them to know that someone's out there experience what they did and overcame it. Anthony Bones is an interesting one because he's a, he's openly gay. And he gets screen time because he's also a part of the acclaimed. But he presents as a masculine man. And this is where Sonny Kiss, if you listen to my other podcast, this is where Sonny Kiss is getting stifled because Sonny Kiss is not being put in the position as he presents the way Javadal is. Javadal mixes up with the gals most of the time over on Impact. He'll get in the ring with the guys, but he mixes it up with the females. That would be a great idea for Sonny Kiss so he can get more representation of his brand of homosexuality or as he calls it, trans film. Because those are people that want to watch him too. Jay Cargill said, I'm here for the confident women. I love it when someone tells me, you can't do something. Because I'm like, okay, watch this. I'm going to do this ten times better than you could imagine. I'm here for the underdogs. I'm here for to prove people wrong. I'm here to bridge to other cultures out there. I represent a lot of layers. I'm a strong African woman. I'm a mother. I'm a child psychologist. I'm a trainer. In wrestling, you're probably not going to get all of them represented. But this is why we do interviews like this to explore more about ourselves. I like that Jay said, I'm a strong African woman. Jay Cargill is of Jamaican descent. She's a mother and she is an educated woman. And she wants her daughter to see a proud, beautiful representation of a black woman in a world where black women are villainized ostracized abused and talked about like dogs in the street all over the place so wherever a little black girl can get some solace and can suspend her mind 
it's always fantastic. And that goes for Hispanic girls and all kinds of girls. Imagine a little girl in Afghanistan able to watch wrestling for five, ten minutes. Just now over in Afghanistan, they closed the beauty parlors because they know that that is the place where those women can go and be pretty and talk and mingle and relax from the realities of the world that they live in. But they close that down because they want those women to know their position in society is that lower than a rat in the street. And it's really sad. I like what Jay Cargill said. Excellent. Next question. What's been a positive fan interaction from you from seeing you on screen? Eddie Kingston said Eddie Kingston said he talked about mental health and it's a real thing. It's bugged out that I've had people come up to me and tell me they didn't commit suicide because they heard him talk. Anthony Bowen said, I get a ton of messages all the time from other athletes who are out. People have been bullied. Everyone's situation is different. But we all know what fear is, anxiety, and sadness is. We all get those emotions from the different range of experiences. But we all can relate to the same thing. As an openly gay man performing on a wrestling show... Has this embrace of fans changed how they saw you? Anthony Bowen said, honestly, the last thing that kept me in the closet was wrestling. Back in 2012, it wasn't the same kind of environment. Now there was, now that there were threats or anything, not that there. But it wasn't something very comfortable for anyone who was closeted or wanted to be themselves. My best friends knew, my parents knew, which was enough for me. But I didn't know how fans would react. If I would have to get into the ring and protect myself against someone who would take liberties. My boyfriend Michael asked me to make a video of us for his YouTube channel. At the first, I was like, nope, that's not happening, which was terrible. But once I did it, I got some texts from some other wrestlers who said they saw it and we and loved it and respected me. And wished we would have told them sooner. And I felt real weight come off my shoulders. My industry respected me. The fans respected me. It was the best decision I ever made. For an out person of color to be accepted by fans is really cool. Lastly, Jay Cargill got the last question. She said, and he, they said, you're the first black female wrestler to be featured on the video game cover. How empowering do you think your achievements are to young black girls watching? She said, I believe it's very empowering. I started wrestling two years ago. I practice every day. I try to be the best person I can. And I believe that if you put your mind and body into something and tell yourself you can do it, you can do it. That's what I'm here for, to inspire the next generation, to inspire women in general, and inspire all the little black girls that it's not what society says. It's about what you feel is enough for you. There is no ceiling in your world if you keep on pushing. So, 18 minutes in. This was an excellent article outside of Tony Khan. Okay. But I'll say this. The reason why there's a wrestling boom is because of diversity. Right now, we got Athena, uh, ROH, uh, Willow Nightingale won the um, the uh, tournament. Uh, we got a Japanese woman in Asuka. If you want to talk about diversity, an uh, Australian woman holding the belt. Bianca Belair was the longest reigning champion in the modern era as a black woman. Wanda Espy with um, Sasha Banks. Indies are giving the belts up to the, to the black folks. You got Leo Rush. Um, I forgot his name. He's the uh, media champion. Leo Rush won a champion. Uh, our girl, Na um, not Naomi, I'm sorry, Trinity just won the Impact Wrestling Championship. I literally got Impact Wrestling Plus just to keep up with Trinity. It's diversity. It is. Now, if we could get some diversity in the writer's room, then we'd really be cooking with some fish grease. But, of course, it's a slow progress and blah, 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 blah. So... Y'all tell me what y'all think. What is causing the wrestling boom? I say diversity, equity, and inclusion. What do you say? Hit me in the comments. Later.